Many people know the legend of the she-wolf who nurtured the twins, but this is not the only version of how Rome was founded. There are myths in which a divine phallus is responsible for the birth of the famous twins, and there are those where Romulus and Remus did not exist, and the glory for the founding of the city entrusted to a woman. But come on, now you will hear it all for yourselves. Version 1. Classic. Once upon a time there lived a Trojan prince Aeneas, son of the goddess Venus. He was doing well until his mother won the oldest beauty contest in history, and by directly bribing the judge. That judge was Paris to whom Venus promised the love of the most beautiful of all mortal women, Helen. Helen was married to the king of Sparta. When she escaped with Paris, taking her husband's treasury, all of Greece gathered to return the unfaithful wife. In the war that broke out, Troy perished, Aeneas, with his mother's help, was able to escape from the burning city. Soon a small group of surviving Trojans rallied around him. Then, Aeneas had a divine illumination. It turns out that a great destiny awaits him. His family is destined to found the greatest city on earth. A handful of refugees from Troy set out to wander the seas in search of a new home. Overcoming many obstacles, they found themselves in Italy. After a small victorious war against the natives, Aeneas married the daughter of the king of the Latins, Lavinia. Their son founded the city of Alba Longa, and Aeneas' family ruled there happily until a coup d'etat occurred in one generation. One brother deposed another and seized power, and enlisted that brother's daughter as a vestal so that the line might be broken up. This daughter's name was Rhea Silvia, and she swore that she was pregnant by Mars himself. For who else but a god could infringe on the sacred virginity of a vestal? When she gave birth to twins, the evil usurper uncle ordered them drowned in the river. But they were not ordinary children, but divine ones, so the river carried them to a hill, where a she-wolf found them and fed them. Soon the twins were taken to the local shepherd, Faustulus. He and his wife had no children, so he took the foundlings and raised them. They were named Romulus and Remus. The twins, now grown up, were brought together by fate with their overthrown grandfather, who identified them by signs and comparisons. Discovering the secret of their origins, the twins killed the usurper and returned the throne to their grandfather. They themselves decided to found a new city. When they drew the sacred boundary of the city, Romulus said that no one would ever desecrate that boundary with impunity. Remus decided to make a joke at the wrong time and mockingly jumped over the line, for which he was killed by his own brother. Romulus named the city Rome. This was April 21, 753 BC. Version 2. Female Influence After the destruction of Troy, the remnants of the Trojans wandered around the world on ships for a long time. One day they landed near the mouth of the Tiber River. The women by then were tired of wandering the seas, and they wanted to stop. Among them was a certain Roma, apparently in a position of authority. She came up with an ingenious plan to set fire to the ships, and then the men would have no choice but to stay here. Apparently the ladies were so desperate that the plan was accepted with gusto. The men, of course, scolded. But there was nothing they could do. The ships had burned to the ground. They began to investigate the area, and it turned out that the land here was fertile, the neighbors were intellectuals, the climate was perfect, just like heaven on earth. Everyone began to thank Roma for her determination, and the city was eventually named after her. Version 3. Phallic Once in the bedroom of King Alba Longa, a miracle happened. Out of the hearth, right out of the fire, rose the most real phallus. It rose and stayed there for days on end. The soothsayers all agreed that it wasn't just standing there, but that he was waiting for a worthy woman to give birth to someone obviously great. The king realized everything and called one of his daughters with orders to conceive urgently from this vision. The daughter, of course, was horrified, and in her place she secretly sent her maid on this honorable mission. The king, learning of this deception, was furious and wanted to execute both of them. But then the goddess Vesta appeared in his dream and forbade their execution. So the girls survived, and soon the maid gave birth to twins. It was Romulus and Remus, who gave the king no rest, so he had them killed. But the killer had a conscience and left the children on the riverbank instead of killing them. Then, as in a Disney cartoon, birds began to arrive and bring them food in their beaks, and the she-wolf fed them with her milk. That's how the children survived until a shepherd found them. He rescued and raised them. And the adult twins then attacked the king and killed him for revenge, and later founded the city of Rome. 